laying over in my mind or in the Lord placing on my heart and they you know they got the opportunity to sing tonight. So let's sing at Calvary, praise the Lord. You know, many years spent vanity and pride, but Jesus Christ. And they wrote a train and came here to preach. But God, but for the grace of God, on a Saturday night, I won't forget that sermon. It just really stuck out to me. You know, I'm thankful for the grace of God. Amen. I'm thankful for Calvary.
Amen. I was just, you know, I just every night I just, I just wanted to linger in the altar because I want to be near the cross. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's a precious fountain. Praise God. And a wonderful fountain near the cross. Praise the Lord.
they drew the cross. They drew the cross. Amen. Praise the Lord. Appreciate that, Brother Gabe. God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm sure certainly glad to be in God's house. Amen. I'm, I just enjoyed the weekend. I want to commend the church and all your hard work and your faithfulness to the to the work of the Lord and the labor of the Lord. Amen. And uh, you did such a great job and, and uh, just worked hard. The yes, meal was, was just unbelievable. Yes, it was. The food Amen. was unbelievable. It was wonderful. And uh, so, uh, yeah. man, I'll tell you, it was good. Amen. And uh, so I think think we, and here's the thing I wanted to, one of the things I wanted to commend you on is the way you worshiped on Sunday morning, uh, even though there was the uh, church was full of visitors, but you went ahead and got in at church. Amen. And uh, I believe, you know, uh, at the chapel, our tradition, and we're we're a very traditional church. We worship the Lord like we always have. We've not, you know, we've not uh, changed in that regard. And uh, we want the moving of the Spirit. We want the power of the Holy Ghost in our in our worship. And uh, you know, and I know there's a lot of people that's, that's ventured off away from that and, and uh, got into a little bit more contemporary type things, and that all has its place. But I, but I'm thankful that you just obeyed the Lord Amen. and worshipped the Lord uh, right on Sunday, and just let the Lord help you Amen. Sunday. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you would, I would like for you to remember Brother Adair. He's traveling in Columbia. On a mission trip, so be praying for brother. Be praying for the brother in there, working in some prisons down there, and so just keep him in prayer. He'll be down there for another week or so. So uh, be praying for him, all right? And uh, just uh, call his name out in your prayer time together, all right? And uh, also tomorrow night, the uh, peanut brittle crew will be meeting again, and they'd like for you to visit with them and share in that fun uh, frivolity that they have there. And uh, they'll be meeting tomorrow night at 6, and, and the Peanut Brittle Club will be uh, trying to uh, hold their final meeting of the year and finish that up. So if you'd like to get in on it, that will be your opportunity tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And uh, if they don't get finished well, tomorrow night, they'll do it on Monday night but, and finish it up. I'm trying to get it done. So, uh, and uh, tell you what, selling the peanut brittle so quick this year, awesome. just going, Amen. Uh, going like That's amazing. hot kicks, hot kicks. <laughs> flat kicks, uh, whatever. It's going though. And uh, I, Jerry's got up how many stores selling it up north of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Eighteen. Eighteen yeah. stores yeah. selling it. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? It is. And, uh, it's that's just great. And then it sure beats standing outside of Dollar General, though, Brother Jerry. Amen. And, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, anyway, appreciate that. It's going to be a tremendous blessing to the camp. Amen. So uh, appreciate all the hard work in that department as well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord's good, isn't it? Yes, yes. All the time, all the time. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Who wants to give the Lord praise tonight? Brother Gallagher. Thank you, Pastor. Out of what I consider the heavens and the handiworks of God, what is man? That God is mindful of a speck, a word, like an ass. God said, Bessel, whoa, the thing that a king died for me. Talk about road. Folks edition. Nobody. Come from nowhere. Right. And to think that God picked me have picked. Yeah. The Bible said he brought three million out of Israel. Right. He brought them out of the silver and gold. <coughs> and there was not one people, one among them. Oh, yeah. Well.
How many shoes you got in your closet? <laughs>
Somebody else can just talk while she's done. It's your opportunity. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Ed, Lord bless you. I just want to thank the Lord for the day that I could be here on this part of the revival. Yeah. But I think the Lord has been helping me a lot. Good.
this today. And uh, but I, I really felt that I needed to do this tonight and uh, preach to you tonight, to preach to someone tonight. And uh, and I just really felt it on my heart. So uh, and maybe maybe it's uh, maybe it's my lunch that's still bothering me, but. Uh, do one of and here's here's why I wrestled with it is because today in chapel I, I spoke to, chapel here, to the school and uh, I don't like I don't like to to repeat things like that. I don't like to repeat things. But when I was speaking today in the chapel, I felt like the Lord kind of directed me that I need I need to share this with you tonight. Right yeah. now, this morning I used an illustration. I'm not going to use it today, tonight, okay? Because I don't think they, I don't think they could handle it. I don't think they could handle it, you know. But uh, anyway, amen. So look with me, if you would. Look with me um, to the book of Judges. Maybe you've, uh, what was that guy, author's name this morning? Y'all remember? No. Passed the test today. Somebody had it this morning. Did they help me? The author, there's an American author, he's a novelist. And his name is John Irving. John Irving. You had it, Travis, right. John Irving. And, uh, and uh, he, he was a novelist, he's famous, he writes kind of like dramas, but he does it and he fills it with a lot of comedy, and he puts a lot of comedy in them, so they're kind of, a, they're kind of humorous. But the thing that stands out about John Irving is that when he writes a novel, he, he first, he begins writing that novel by writing the final sentence of the book. He writes the final sentence. And then from that final sentence, he kind of backs up and he writes everything directed towards that final sentence of the book. So everything is directed there. That final sentence just kind of brings everything together and ties it all together and is just the, uh, uh, the culmination of the entire book takes place right there in that final sentence of that book. Well, if you look at the book of Judges and you look at chapter 25, chapter 21 and verse 25, and you look at the last sentence of the book, you look at the last sentence of the book, and it just seems to kind of bring the whole book together. It culminates it all. It brings it all down to just one sentence. Just one sentence. And it's in verse 25, when it says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Right. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Yes. Yes. Amen. There was no king in Israel. They didn't serve anybody. Nobody was king over them. Everybody did just what they wanted to do. They, were, they did exactly what, how they lived how they wanted right. to live. Amen. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. In his own eyes. Tell you, uh, have you ever done something, and when you've done it, when it, you, 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 just, you looked and you thought, I'm so dumb. <laughs> Have you ever said something? And no sooner have you said it, said, oh, that was so dumb. It's, you, you don't mind me, I hope you don't mind me using the word dumb tonight because that's what it's going to be, okay? <laughs> and that's just the way it's going to be. But, you know, have you ever just said something, said, oh, that's, or done something? Yeah. Yeah. You ever done something that, that injured your, that injured 
you, hurt you, cut you, wounded you, and on those two that he got a dozen. Oh, that was so dumb. That was so dumb. Some action, something that you did. You know, sometimes we do some pretty dumb things. We do. We, we can do some dumb things. That's why there's an entire library of books that's yellow with black print. Alright? And it's the Four Dummies series and library. Alright? Computers for dummies. Yes. How to talk to dummies for dummies. That's, that's actually one of them. Alright? Uh, they've got all these books out there for dummies. Why? Because we do some dumb things sometimes. Right. And sometimes we, we're not the smartest person. Yeah. Right? Sometimes. And we can do some we can do some pretty dumb things. We, we, right. Well, do you know who the first person to ever die in a car accident was? First person to ever die in a car accident. It was a lady by the name of Mary Ward. Mary Ward. She died on August the 31st. Get this. 1869. She was the first recorded victim of an automobile accident. It was a steam-powered, okay, automobile. They had not even invented the gas-powered automobile yet. It was a steam-powered automobile that went off the road and uh, threw her out of the car and killed her. That was Mary Ward. Do you know who the first person in America to die from a car accident? Well, that was that happened in 1899, right at the right almost at the turn of the century, and his name was Henry Bliss. Henry Bliss was just enjoying a blissful day. <laughs> he stepped out in front of a car and got hit by the car, and he died. He wasn't even driving the car. But that was way before parents ever taught their kids, look both ways before you cross the street. That was way before that. And so he died. And he, you know, the, since that time, there's been over 20 million people that have died in car accidents. They have died. You know that uh, all those accidents, they, it wasn't until uh, the 50s and the 60s that uh, people started complaining about automobiles. It started, it started becoming quite a few of them. And in the, the 50s and 60s, the, uh, the auto industry just said, you know, hey, it's, it's just part of the nature of an automobile. In other words, just get over it. Just get over it. But as time went on, as, as automobile deaths began to increase, then the, the National Traffic Safety Board stepped in, the Transportation Safety Board stepped in, and they began to intervene and they began to put restrictions upon car makers. They began to require them to make changes. How do you, how do you remember the old car? where everything was steel. How many remember the steel dashboard in those old cars? And nobody had to wear a seatbelt. Nobody, nobody's required to be in a car seat. That, man, that was, that's ridiculous. And you know what? I mean, when I was growing up, we never had to wear a seatbelt.
you know, cram, you know, 15 people in one car. <laughs> sitting on laps, hanging out of windows, right? All piled up in the driver's seat. Nobody cared, it was just driving a car. But they begin to put some restrictions, and they begin to make requirements, and they begin to pass laws, and they begin to make requirements for the automobile industry. And they begin, the automobile industry began to do things to look to see how they could prevent death in a car. They begin to begin to uh, make changes. Yeah. Now the dashboard's not steel no more. Right? They put seat belts in the car. They've got airbags. Yeah. Not just airbags in the front, they've got side airbags. They've got airbags. You know, just if, you, if it goes up, it's going to be like a you know, big marshmallow factory all of a sudden. Just like, I mean, they've, they've got airbags now that are deployed that save you, that prevent you from dying. Your seat belts can prevent you from being ejected from the car, keep you safe, and, and prevent you from being hurt. They went up to great lengths to try to do this, and they've done, they've done all kinds of research. They use technology to try to figure out how to keep people safe in a car. Right. Yeah. Yes, they have. I'm giving my point here just a minute, all right? Very long way to get there. All right? But in 1980, 1980, they created something called a crash dummy. A crash dummy. You ever, you ever seen a picture of a crash dummy? See, before the crash dummy, they used cadavers. All right? They used animals. Okay? They did. But the problem with cadavers is they were short supplies sometimes. All right? The problem with animals is people complained about it. And people didn't like them doing that with animals. And so they had to find something else to use. And also, once they had used a cadaver, or once they had used an animal, it was hard to reuse it again. You know what I mean. Okay? So they developed the crash dummy. That, that man that is lifelike, that sits in the car and allows them to, to race that car and run it straight into a brick wall. <laughs> that crash dummy that they put in the car and then they roll the car over and they put it through crash and they put it through some kind of a, a horrible ordeal. And then they see how did the crash dummy make it? How did he survive? Did he do okay? So that is how the crash, in 1980s when they crashed every you know, if you remember, they, they did a nationwide uh, public service announcement campaign. You remember the two crash dummies that could talk to each other? Remember them? One of them's name was Vince and one was Larry. <laughs> Vince and Larry, the crash dummies, and they would, they would, they would put them in a car and crash into the car. And then Vince and, and, and Larry would talk to each other, and they would they would talk to each other about the crash, and they said, don't be a crash dummy. Don't be a crash dummy. Well, I want to talk to you about it. Don't be a crash dummy. Right. Don't be a crash dummy. Yes. Okay? I mean, just think about it. Okay? There's a, when we think about life, when we think about all that we go through in our life, I mean, there's a lot of dangers out there, a lot of risks. Don't be a crash dummy. Come on. Don't be a crash dummy. When you read the book of Judges and you read the whole book, you look at what happened with them, and it was in they would, while they, they would serve God, and then when everything was good, they would walk away from God, they'd turn away from the Lord, they'd go after idols, and then God would send uh, the enemy in, and the enemy would take them into captivity and, and steal from them and steal their crops and, and take it all, and they would they would uh, God would send a judge. Savior, if you would, and then to pull them out of the mess they were in, and they would do good for a while, and then guess what? Here they would go right back into sin, and once again, the enemy coming in, and this was a very cycle that they got into over and over and over again, all through the book of Judges, and you wonder why don't you learn? 
Yeah. One crash after another. And they would just get up. They would like they would brush themselves off. They would get it all back together. And here they would go crashing right back into a wall once again. And they would go right back into captivity. And then they would destroy themselves. Learn from their, your mistakes. Right. Yeah. Learn from your mistakes. Realize, amen, that you know what? Amen, you don't have to be a crash dummy. Yeah. You don't have to constantly be going through the crash. Yeah. The crash. You ever seen somebody who crashed? Yeah. Did you ever see anybody who, who crashed their life? Right. You know, it's a sad, it's a sad tale. It's a sad story. Have you ever come upon an accident? Have you ever watched an accident take place? Have you ever seen that? And what, you know what? It's a horrific sight. It's a terrible thing. Maybe you've been involved.
reason why why people crack or why they have a wreck is because they are speeding. Going at a high rate of speed. Speeding is a total disregard for safety. Yes. Sure. Speeding is a reckless, uncaring, unconcerned when you speed. Yeah. All right. Now I understand, you know, you know, might be five miles. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. I'm talking about the one that has to go 20 miles over the speed limit. Right. I'm talking about the one that has reckless abandon and without concern. Right. Do you know what? The one that is speeding, I mean, they're more worried about getting a ticket than they are worried about the car that they hit and whether those people survive. Yeah. They, are, they, are, they are not concerned about.
lesson. A failure to yield. A failure to yield the right way. And when you think about it, why should I yield? These people, they had no king. They did what was right in their own eyes. It don't matter. Yeah. It don't matter. Right. I don't have to listen to the law. I don't have to submit myself. I don't have to surrender. I don't have to surrender to the Lord. I don't have to give my life to God. I don't have to surrender or submit to God's authority in my life. I don't have to I just do what I want to do. And that failure to yield leads to crash and death. Don't be a crash dummy. Amen. Don't be a crash dummy. I remember when I was a young person. Young. In Beth Chapel, maybe you know, we'll know what I'm talking about. When an 18 year old young man died in Bethel Chapel as a result of an accident, I know. a motorcycle accident. Sad. It was such a sad day. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Some of you will remember oh, yeah. the feeling and the, the gloom and the, the sadness oh, the yes. that settled over a church That's right. because somebody had crashed. Yeah. I want you to know. A lot of times in the church suffers great sadness because somebody crashed. Oh yeah. I remember it was early in the morning, and we were pastoring in Ohio, and the call came, and then Brother Dan McCarty called. And his words were simply, you know, he had frantic. Stephanie's been involved in a car accident. Oh, yes. oh, They've taken her to such such yeah. hospital. Right. So we hurried to the hospital. Stephanie, she worked at McDonald's and she worked the early morning. She worked the early open for breakfast. So she was driving to work early in the morning. It was still dark outside. It was a foggy morning. She was driving over country roads. Joe over roads that she drove many times. She came over a, a little rise in the road. And there, a tanker, a semi-tanker truck was backing across the two-lane highway into a dairy. He had the, the road was blocked with his tanker. And Stephanie went right under that tanker truck. Went right under that. It ripped the top of that car off. Tell you what, she was, it was, I can tell you that it was a very traumatic time. Because a young person had crashed. Yeah. By the grace of God, she survived. And, and she still carries the scars and still has the complications because of that accident and it's been a number of years now. But I'm telling you, the trauma. Yes, you're right. The trauma. It's probably been 20 years now that Lily still carries the scars. See, a crash oh, yes. can affect you yes. for the rest of your life. Yes. Don't be a crash dummy. No, no. Don't be a crash dummy. All right. I just felt like sharing this to somebody tonight, for somebody tonight. Yeah. But you know, you're kind of like the people of Israel. No king for me. I'm going to do what is right in my own eyes. What we don't realize sometimes is that we need a king. We need a king. We need the King of Kings in our life. You 
you need to make Jesus Lord of your life. You need to set him up on the throne of your life. And he needs to become king. Yes, he does. And you need to serve him. And you need to obey him. And you need to listen to the law of the king and live by the word of the king. Hallelujah. You better be careful. Listen, you need a king. Yes, we do. You need King Jesus in your life. You need to set him up. I believe it. Say, Lord, I believe it. I will serve you. I'm not going to do what's right in my own eyes. I want to do what's right in your eyes, Lord. I want you to be pleased with me. I want to serve you. I want to live for you, Lord. And you are the king of my life. Until you get to that place that you're willing to make him king. And quit doing what's right in your own eyes. You're heading for a crash. I don't want to call you a dummy. I don't want to do that. You know what the Bible would call you? The Bible don't use the word dummy. No. They would call you a fool. The Bible would call you a fool. Amen. Stay with me. Lord, I ask you to speak to us tonight, Lord Jesus. God, I ask you, Lord, God, that you talk to somebody's heart tonight. God, this is what I felt like sharing with somebody tonight, Lord. I pray, God, that you would listen, impress it upon their heart. God, we think it could never happen to us. We think it could never happen to us. But God, we know the crashes happen every day. God, we see it happening all around us. We see young people. We see young marrieds. We see families. We see adults. We see them crash all around us all the time. So sometimes, Lord, it's not what we anticipate, not what we expect of the Lord. The devastation is the same. God, I pray, Lord God, that you'd speak to the heart of somebody tonight. And God, that you would set, that they would allow you to be set up as king in their life. And that they would serve you, Lord. And that they would live for you. God, don't let their faith become shipwrecked. God, I ask you in your name, Lord Jesus. Speak to them now, God. Speak to them now. I want to pause for just a minute. I want the Holy Spirit to talk to you. I want the Holy Ghost to talk to you. Amen. I want the Holy Ghost to talk to you. I want every head bowed, and I want anybody looking around tonight. I want us to make this between us and God. All right, us and the Lord today. Amen. And I want you to want to know that the Holy Ghost is speaking to your heart tonight. Amen. You just raise your hand. God, David, I don't want to crash. I don't want to crash. Just slip your hand up. I need prayer with you. We'll just come to the altar. And then we'll pray together. Anybody? Anybody tonight? I don't want to crash. <laughs>
I have dealt with you even upon my pillow. Yea, my conviction is even on thee now. It's the Holy Ghost that's talking. The Holy Spirit talking to you. I believe the Lord would talk to your heart and say, make me king. Yield yourself to me. Surrender your life to me. Surrender your life to me. Hallelujah. Does anybody want to lift your hands out for the church to pray? Just lift your hand. We'll pray together. All right. God bless you. God's talking to somebody. God's talking to me. I think God's talking to a few people tonight. The Holy Spirit's talking to us. Man, I'll tell you, God help us. Help us. Church, let's come to the altar.